Great, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited and also really scared. Because normally, normally I talk to people much younger than you. I talk to students ages about eight to 10. So I thought, you know, what could help me be less scared? And I thought, well, maybe I could bring one of my students up here on stage. So I invited one of my students, he's from Virginia, actually. I invited him to come up here and help us. His name is Ronan, and he's driven all the way from Virginia to be here with us today. So let's give a big round of applause for Mr. Ronan Boyarski. My name is Ronan Boyarski, and I am 10 years old. Wait a minute. How old are you? 10 years old. Okay, just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. I have designed my own mod for Minecraft. I am working on a 3D game. And most recently, an app called Flingshot. Hold on one second, Ronan. What was that last one? An app called Flingshot. Beautiful. And you, so, so wait a minute. You made your own video game. You've mm -hmm. made your own Minecraft mod, and now you're working on this app. Is that right? How did you create this app? Well, I learned how to program in Fusion 2. Um, I, al I also learned how to use objects, sprites, sounds, and special files such as an INI file. Wait, what, what kind of file was that? An INI file. What does an INI file do? It transfers data from a certain application to your device's memory. Wait, hold on. What? So say, um, you're playing a video game and it has level access. Okay. So, say I did three levels and I close it out. When I reopen it without an INI, &I, I would have access to level one, the default. But with an INI, &I, it will save your progress and show you where you're supposed to go. That For example. Is, that's amazing. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. You have access to three levels if you beat three levels. Four if you beat four. It can that's save data and compute things. That is awesome. And what do you like about creating? How, how, when you were creating that app, how did it start off? It started off basic, but then it grew more complicated. Um, and the pa um, it became more interesting the more I created. The functions got more powerful and had a greater impact on my finished result. That's awesome. And what would you tell these guys if they wanted to create their own app? How, how can they do that? Well, you need to work hard, be determined, and you need to be unique and use your imagination. Invent something that has never been invented before. That's awesome. Let's do a round of applause for Ronan real quick. <laughs> He's gonna stay up here with me on stage because I wanna give you a speech that we give to 10 year olds. So imagine for a moment that you're 10 years old again and you have your whole life ahead of you. And I want you to think about this question. What are you going to do with your life? Really think about it. Don't give me the answer that you tell everyone. They ask you where you're going to college. What are you going to do? Really think about what do you love to do? What do you love to do? Because here's the cool thing. Today, I want to tell you how I got my dream job and how you could get yours too. And I want to tell you that as a kid, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. As Sam mentioned, I went to Romania and set up computer schools with my family, and I loved it. I loved working with people from other cultures. I loved working with kids. So even as a kid, I decided that's what I wanted to do with my life, to help kids. So I studied hard in junior high school, in high school, in college, and I got into the graduate degree of my choice. I got into my top choice graduate school. Everything was going to plan, and then about halfway through my graduate degree, I dropped out. I quit, I stopped going to school, and I started my dream job. But enough about me. Let's talk about you. How to do what you love. You can do what you love. Here's the cool thing. You live in a world full of magic. Sheer and utter magic. So much so that if your great great grandma was here today, she would be freaking out. Because you can fly in the air, fly. Do you know how long it takes to get from here to China? 16 hours. Do you know how long that used to take? Years. Now all you need is a warm napkin, a snack, a few movies, and a nap, and you're in China. That's crazy. <laughs> you can fly. That's magic. Also, you don't forget flying. You can tonight, today, on the way home, talk face to face with someone in China using this magical device that you carry with you everywhere you go. Your voice can carry around the world. 
And you can talk to people in China instantly. That's magic. Also, you know everything instantly. There was a time where if you didn't know something, you just didn't know it. You couldn't be like, Babam Siri, uh, what's the capital of North Carolina? Or Babam Siri, uh, I'm lost. Uh, can you take me home? You couldn't do that. You were just lost. You just didn't know. <laughs> but now you know everything instantly. These things are magical. And of course, all of those things relate to technology, which is this incredibly magical tool. And I'm guessing that if that tool can enable you to talk face to face with someone in China, it can probably help you do what you love. Here's the cool thing, Ronan. If you want to do what you love with technology, all you have to do is be a genius. I'm just joking. If you want to do what you love with technology, all you have to do is learn to create. Because with technology, you can create anything. You can make an app like Ronin, or you can make a website, or you can make a job, or a company, or a movie, or a fashion collection, or a restaurant, or a charity. You can make all of that with technology. With these magical tools, you can learn to create anything you want. All you have to do is learn to create. So that's what we're going to talk about, how to create. The first thing you need to do is to decide. Now, here's the tricky thing about decisions. Sometimes they're hard to make. But decisions only take about five seconds. Ready for this? I want to be an animator. Done. Five seconds. That's all it takes to make a decision. And sometimes it's hard, because you think, I have to decide what I want to do for the rest of my life. Or I have to decide what do I want to do in college. But you don't have to decide that. All you have to decide right now is what do you want to create? And there's no wrong decision. So you have to decide what you want to create. Then you have to decide what tools you want to use to create it. So let's say you did want to be an animator and make animated movies. Here's a cool fact. You can download software that will help you make an animation while you're sitting at home eating nachos on your couch. That's pretty awesome. These tools are insane. They're crazy. And if a tool doesn't exist yet, you can make it. That's what coding's for. You could write your own tools. That's the power of technology. It enables you to be an animator. So you have to choose what tools you're going to use, but you also need to choose who is going to be on your team. So let's say you want to be an animator. And maybe none of your friends are animators. Maybe none of your friends are animators. That's fine. You can still have a team. First of all, remember, your voice can echo around the world. You could talk to people in China. Maybe you don't even want to talk to them, but actually there are animators all over the world who publish their work online. And they share it with you and they say, hey, if you're making an animation, uh, here's a character you could use. Here's a background you could use. Here's a song you could use. And you can collaborate with people all around the world by simply downloading their files and using them in your own creation. Uh, but maybe you want someone else to be on your team. Like maybe your family and friends could be on your team. Now, I don't know if your family and friends knows how to animate. Do they? No. OK. That's fine. Because even if your family doesn't know how to make an animated movie, they probably know how to watch an animated movie. And they could watch your creation, and they could be like, oh, Ronan, I, I don't understand this part. Or, oh, Ronan, this, this is insane. This is great. Nice work. And they can give you that feedback, and they can also help hold you accountable. If you decide that you want to make an animated movie and you tell your mom, she could be like, oh, that's perfect. We can have a big party, we can make some popcorn, invite all of your friends, and have a big premiere. Red carpet, maybe? It would be awesome. So you can use your family and friends to help you make an animated movie. Even if they have no idea how to turn a computer on, they can help you. You have to decide what you want to create. Here's the good news. When you're deciding what to create, you cannot make a wrong decision. You cannot make a wrong decision. The only wrong decision is one that you don't make. The only wrong decision is indecision. Someone once said, the biggest risk is taking no risks at all. That was Mark. He was 17 when he created Facebook. After you decide what to create, then you need to learn how to create it. And here's the cool thing about learning. It's actually the coolest thing you could possibly do with your day. Learning is the most exciting thing you could possibly do. I know that may sound strange to some high schoolers, maybe. But I want you to humor me for a second. And I want you to close your eyes. 
I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think, what is one thing that you wish you knew how to do? Man, if I could only know how to, or if, if I knew how to, okay, think about that. And wait, hold on, sorry, open your eyes. That's what you want to do? You should have told me. I actually, know, I know someone who can do that. Yeah, in fact, after this presentation, let's talk. In fact, I'll just tell you right now that uh, their name is Google. <laughs> and they know how to do that. And you can use that magical device and you can figure out how to learn something. You can figure out who to learn it from. You can figure out where to learn it. You can find all those things. So let's say you're not interested in technology and you want to uh, create an urban farm. You want to bring farming to your city. You want to maybe make a garden that you can use. That's awesome. You can use technology to figure out. You can watch videos. You can read articles. But also you can just find another urban farm. And you can go to that farm. And you're going to get there at 5 AM because that's when they get there. And you're going to dig all day because that's what they do. And you're going to smell like manure sometimes because that's how they smell sometimes. But you're going to ask them, why do you do what you do? Why do you love being a farmer? So you need to learn. And here's the most important thing. You cannot stop asking questions. There's going to be 100 reasons why you can't learn how to create an urban farm. I was too busy. My mom wouldn't take me. I had too much school. All of these things are going to get in the way, and you can't let them get in the way. You have to keep asking questions. You have to keep asking. Someone once said, it was Albert. He was five. Someone once said, it's not that I'm so smart, but I stay with questions longer. When he was five, he asked his dad, how does a compass work? Laid theory of relativity. So you have to decide what you want to create. You need to learn how to create it. And the last thing you have to do is just do it. Make it happen. Follow through. Execute. The last thing you need to do is to execute your creation. Here's how. First, you start with a design. How do you want to make this creation? How do you want it to make you feel? What should the experience be for your users, the people playing your app, or your customers, people coming to your restaurant? How, does it, how should it make you feel? And you have to design that around what they want, what their thoughts are, what their day-to-day -day is, all things you should have learned. So you decide that, you design it, and then after you've designed it, you develop it. You have to make it, right? So you have to figure out, OK, how in the world am I going to make my app? When you log back in, how am I going to make that app save what level you're on? You choose an INI &I file. Awesome. Or you have to figure out, OK, when my customers show up, uh, what time should my staff show up in order to be there? You have to develop that. You have to design it. And then once you have it finished, once you've designed and developed this creation that you're so proud of, you need to redo it. Because your first draft is not your best draft. And you need to revise it. And you need to change it. You need to edit it. Sometimes you need to throw it away. Sometimes you need to add stuff to it. But you have to keep revising. Keep designing, because as you go over and over and you write that story again and again, you're going to find some cool things. You're going to find out what's magical. You're going to find out that one joke that makes your movie perfect, or that one note that makes your song amazing. You're also going to find some things that aren't so great, some things you're like, man, wow, I can't believe I made this. Let's throw that away real quick. You're going to find some flaws. And you're going to take care of them. You might find some flaws you really like, and you'll keep them. But you have to keep making that creation. Keep editing it. And then once it's done, and once you're ready, you have to share it. Too many creations die on computer desktops and garage shelves because no one ever shares it. So you have to take that thing you've made, and you need to share it with the world. Think of this. Let's say you did make an animated movie. And you have all your friends over. And you click play. Best case scenario, you succeed. It's amazing. Everyone's like, wait, you made this animated movie? And how, how old are you? And you, you made this movie? That's incredible. This is what you should do with your life. That's the best case scenario, right? You succeed. The other best case scenario, you fail. And you fail epically. And you press play, and it doesn't work. And it looks terrible, and you're embarrassed, and your friends are there, and they're like, oh, man, that's great. You're still in school, right? And you epically fail. Great, because you've taken a step forward. Whether you succeed or whether you fail, you are a better creator because of it, because of what you've learned. 
So the last step you need to do is to execute. And then you need to share it because real creators share their work. Someone once said, real artists ship. Real artists send their work out to the world. That was Steve. He was 17. Sorry, he was 20, not 17, when he created Apple. So you need to decide what do you want to create. You need to learn how to create that. And then you need to execute. You need to make that creation happen. Let me tell you how I found my dream job. When I was a kid, I also saw a movie called Toy Story. Maybe you've heard of that. Now, Toy Story, you have to understand, was the first 3D movie ever. Before that, only 2Ds, OK? Like it was drawn. After that, 3D movies. We saw a bunch of 3D movies, three-dimensional movies. And it blew my mind. How could you possibly make an animated movie on a computer? That was crazy. So I decided I wanted to be an animator, and I learned how to animate. And my animation was awful. It was not good. But I made it, and I created it, and I shared it. And then I thought, you know what, animation's kind of hard. Maybe I'll do game design. Maybe I'll do web design. So I decided to be a web designer. And I found this giant book this big, and a bunch of videos on this site, this new site called YouTube, and a forum, and I learned how to make websites by reading through this giant book. And I loved it. And I made a website, and I shared it. And I kept learning and I kept creating from when I was his age all the way through college. And after college, I decided to take a job teaching kids how to create websites. I didn't know how to teach kids, so I had to learn. I had to watch other teachers. I had to read. I had to teach, actually teach them. That was great. And then we thought, what if we could share these courses, not just with the kids in our after school program, but with kids all around the city. So we decided to start a company. We didn't know how to start a company, so we had to learn. We had to learn how do you set up a business plan and how do you market your stuff. And we had to watch videos and we had to read books and just learn how to create a company. And we did it. We made a company. And then we thought, you know what would be even cooler? What if we made these courses available for kids around the world? What if we made these courses available for kids who might be from Virginia? That would be cool. So we decided to make online classes. We didn't know how to make online classes. We barely had a camera, but we learned how to do it. We learned how to create it, and then we made online classes. And from those classes, we've reached now almost 45,000 kids around the world, including one special one from Virginia. Here's why this is my dream job. When I was a kid, I knew I wanted to work with people. I knew I wanted to help people. But I also knew that I wanted to be a game designer or an animator. And one day at work, I was having an awful day. I was dealing with tax and legal things. Not fun, at least for me. All of this tax stuff, all of this legal stuff, and it was awful. And I was like, man, why, why did we even do this? Why did we even start this job? And then I got a letter in the mail. And it was actually our first ever fan mail. And it was from Virginia. And in that letter was a letter from Ronan and also a bracelet that he had made for us and he had sent to us. And then later, I was speaking at a conference in Virginia. I had never met Ronan. And this kid comes up to me. He sort of looks like him. <laughs> and he says, I'm Ronan. And he shakes my hand. And for me, those two dreams of helping kids and being a game designer, being an animator collided. And it was magic. Here's the thing about magic. It's not doing the impossible. Magic is about doing what is perceived to be impossible. And for hundreds of years, generations of creators have been shattering the perception of human limitation. That's why you can fly in the air. That's why your voice can echo around the world. That's why you can know anything instantly. It's not magic, it's technology. It's something that's been created for you by creators who have come before you. And they look to you now and say this, this is your world. These are your tools. What do you want to create? It's going to be easy. It's not always going to be fun. 
People won't believe in you. People will make fun of you. People will doubt you. People will complain about you. It's going to be hard. You're going to get knocked down. And you're going to feel knocked down. And you're going to feel knocked down. But you're going to keep on getting back up. Because that thing that you are creating is good. And it's worth it. And isn't that what you want to live a life that's worth it? And when that creation's done, you'll share it back with the world. And you will say, this is your world. These are your tools. What do you want to create? Learn how to create. Because those who can create are those who will create the future. Thank you.